Discipline in lab technique is incredibly necessary to produce consistently high quality print work. First, make sure you are purchasing chemicals of high standard. Two points of sale that have shown over the years they sell no junk and are reasonably priced are Artcraft Chemicals in New York and Bostic and Sullivan, and I believe they're in New Mexico. Both can easily be found on an internet search. 2. Once you have secured your chemicals, you will accurately need to weigh them. Myself, I like low-tech, and so I prefer mechanical scales, such as the OAS. The OAS products are of good quality. You can buy a scale like this for around $80. Make sure your choice has some mechanism for calibration. Do not purchase an old-fashioned balancing weight set with two arms where you add and remove weights. They take way too long to use and make the process of weighing tedious. 3. Remember that water is a chemical too and if you do not use some type of purified water at least filter your water with a Brita. Your quality of water is always important, a bit more so with negative developers, especially in terms of iron and metals. When you measure your liquids, it is very important to do so in a glass cylinder. Don't use measuring cups. They are not accurate enough. Always use glassware for mixing and measuring as they can be properly cleaned and will not cross-contaminate as plastic will do. I recommend a 250 milliliter glass cylinder. Their measurements are highly accurate. They can be properly cleaned and fit about the size you will probably want in a darkroom. eBay is a great place for such a purchase. If you wanted a second cylinder, I would recommend a 100 milliliter size. Once you have measured your liquids, Pyrex cups are wonderful to make your stir. And here I recommend a 500 milliliter size. Trays are important too, and if you purchase one for negative processing, you will want a tray one size above your negative size. So if you develop 8 by 10, you should be using a 10 by 12 or even 11 by 14 tray. This is not so important in printing. Myself, I prefer the old Sesco enamelware trays because they can easily be cleaned thoroughly. Even perfectly cleaned, they will stain though. Also, I like them because they are metal and relatively easy then to regulate and manipulate temperatures with the fluids inside. Remember, I advocate changing temperatures to affect development contrast. In this way, plastic trays are not as versatile and can badly stain. Because I print on Azo, which is a very uh, thin print paper, I need flat-bottomed trays, that is, with no ribbing. Using a ribbed tray produces indents on my prints. If you are using double weighted paper, which virtually all print paper is now, ribbing is just fine. And it is easier to pick up a soaked print in a ribbed tray versus one that is not. One last thing about trays. Some advocate ribbed because it increases the flow of new fluids around the print. I never did understand this argument as no emulsion should ever be pointed down towards the base of the tray. 4. Photographic developers are incredibly sensitive to temperature and so an exceedingly important purchase should be an accurate thermometer. Here, use a non-mercury type where the indicator is alcohol as it is flat out more accurate. There are metal dial types of high quality also, mostly used in distilled makings, but ensure the dial can be submerged. Many cannot, as in this Weston.
photographic chemicals are very sensitive to time and here I recommend an old red Kodak timer. They are very loud so you can simply count their second ticks. Also they can be calibrated. Some people like gray labs but they are silent and you need to watch them taking your eyes away from your trays or whatever. The Kodaks can be cheaply purchased through eBay and they just don't seem to go bad even after years of use. Now back to our Amidol developer. There are some who say that Amidol requires a stronger than usual stop bath. I don't know this to be true. If you use 28 percent acetic acid 25 milliliters per 500 milliliters of water works great. If you prefer citric acid, use 7.5 grams per 500 milliliters of water. As far as preparing the amidol, I measure out all the constituents, less the amidol, and place them in a small container together. These are glass bottles two inches wide by three inches tall. This is about the perfect size if you stick to my formula. There is no order to how the chemicals are placed. I repeat, no order. I use a metal porcelain sesco funnel to pour the contents into a bottle. Just as good and easier to find would be an aluminum type you might purchase at an auto shop. Myself, again, I would not favor plastic. You will want to make sure the opening at the base is at least 3 8 inches wide so your chemicals don't get stuck in clumps there, which is aggravating. I don't favor glass funnels as you are placing them usually on another piece of glass and over the long haul something is going to break. When you are ready to begin developing simply pour the bottled contents into 500 milliliters of water. Then add the amidol to 250 milliliters of water and pour everything into one. Certainly you could proceed in a different manner there is no right or wrong way in the mixing process. Also note, in my formula you are actually using 750 milliliters of water, not chemicals added to water to make 750 milliliters. For me, this is a much simpler way to do things and still very accurate. One last thing. You can extrapolate upwards from this formula if you need more than 750 milliliters of developer. Just simply factor as needed. However, you cannot extrapolate down or factor using less fluid. If you do this, you will find your developer depletes rapidly.